On day one, I spawned in as a baby LA, and I was stuck inside of a cage. Oh, look at me. I'm golden. Suddenly, my mom said we were breaking free. Son, you need to help me escape. We need to go now. What now? Ah, uh, okay. Just then, a bunch of pillagers noticed we were trying to escape, and they started attacking us. Hey, get back here. I was able to get past the pillagers, but on my way out, I noticed I had lost my mom. Mom? Mom! Fly away, my little son. Don't stop flying. I heard my mom yell at the top of her lungs for me to get away from the pillagers as she was being held down. I think I lost them. I flew as far as possible, thinking I was safe, until I saw a ravager charging towards me. Ah! Get away from me! I knew I wasn't strong enough to fight it. I was just a baby. So I continued to fly until I got tired. I came to a stop and looked around to make sure nobody was chasing me. Ugh, I need some protection if I want to be safe in this world. Since everyone wanted a part of my golden riches, I decided to grab some wood so I could make a wooden pickaxe and start collecting materials. Well, to the caves I go. I start I started mining for some stone and made stone tools such as an axe, a pickaxe, and a sword. Nice! I have all the weapons I need. I then saw some spiders approaching me, and it was the perfect time to test out my new weapons. You may think I'm small, but I'm super powerful. Hey -ya! I was very proud of myself for defeating all the spiders, but I started getting lonely after a while. I wonder where my mom is. I wish she was here to protect me from this scary world. It was a very long day considering it was the first day of my life, so I flew up to a tree and went to bed. On day two, my little belly started rumbling. It was time to have a feast. I'm so hungry. I flew around and found a jungle. And as I flew down to the bottom of the trees, I saw so many cocoa beans. Hey, I can make a tasty treat out of these. I needed to find more ingredients. So I kept flying and found a village. Ooh, they have some wheat. I'll take some of that. I then found a nice peaceful spot and started making some cookies out of my ingredients. Hopefully these cookies will fill me up. While I was taking a bite from my cookies, I saw that the village was being attacked by pillagers. Those pillagers are crazy. Someone needs to stop them. I knew I couldn't fight back, at least not yet. So I flew back into the jungle to get away from them. Those pillagers probably still have my mom. I kept wandering around and found a tiger. Hey, maybe they know where the rest of my family could be. I went up to the tiger and kindly asked him some questions. Oh, hi, Mr. Tiger. Have you seen any other Alays who look like me? I'm looking for my family. Oh yeah, I just had some cookies. I wouldn't mind sharing one if you'd like. I was so scared. I even offered him one of my cookies, but he didn't want my cookies because just then he started attacking me. I tried fighting him using my sword, but I was about to die. I can't keep fighting. I must fly away. As I fled, I noticed I had gained regeneration powers since I'm in LA. Oh, cool. This will come in handy. On day three, I finally made it out of the jungle alive. Whew, I feel like everyone wants to kill me. I must be special. I needed a new base of operations so that I could have a place where I could feel safe. I went into the forest and started cutting down some trees so that I could start building. Some nice old wood will do the trick. I then started placing the pieces of wood, creating a perfect tiny home. I needed to add some cozy decorations, so I started placing chests and furnaces. I then thought of a perfect idea. If I made a little farm, I could have all the food I ever wanted right next to my home. I planted all the wheat I had gotten from the village from earlier. I then got hungry after all that work. So I ate some of my cookies and grew into a full-size delay with 10 hearts. Wow, I'm growing up so fast. It was now nighttime and I saw some zombies approach me and started to attack. But luckily, I was now prepared. Say goodbye, you zombies. I killed all of them and felt like I was ready for a tougher opponent. On days four through five, I went mining for some coal and iron so that I could build more tools. Now that I'm a big boy, I need some more weapons. I collected enough iron and was able to build an iron pickaxe, an ax, and a sword. Oh yeah, now we're talking. I knew I also needed some gold, so I went back to do some more mining. And luckily, I found so much of it. I headed back to the base and started placing some torches outside of my home to ward off any mean creatures. This place isn't safe. 
I need to make sure nobody comes near my home. I then saw that two pillagers had found my base, so I immediately brought out my sword and fought against them. Stay away from my base. You're messing with the wrong guy. Unfortunately, I was only able to kill one of them and noticed that the other pillager had escaped. I'm gonna tell the pillager king where your base is. Did he say pillager king? Who is that? I brushed that off and then finished expanding my farm and even added some more crops, all while thinking about this so-called pillager king who could possibly be my new enemy. Hmm. I'm gonna add a fence around my farm. I also wanted to make some gold bricks, so I crafted some stone bricks and combined them with gold sheets. Oh yeah, look at all this gold. I then started replacing the walls around my base with the gold bricks. A golden home for a golden boy. On day six through eight, I went exploring through the forest and started to hear some nice music nearby. Ooh, I wonder where those beats are coming from. Someone out there was having a jam. So I followed the music and it led to a little dance dance club. I love this music. I want to join. I entered the dance club and saw that nobody was dancing, but I did notice one little jukebox guy and he looked incredibly sad. <sighs> this place is kind of dead. I wanted to find out why he looked so sad. So I went up to talk to him. Hello, what's wrong little guy? It's so good. That's what led me all the way here. I enjoyed how lit it sounded. He was right. Nobody seemed to like his music and the overall vibe in the club was not great. Well, I should go now. I'm on a special mission. Sure you can join me. I'll name you Bob. I needed to go continue with my mining, so I took Bob with me and we headed out. All right, follow me. While I was mining, I found a grappling hook and some raw gold inside of a chest and I gave it to Bob so he could fly around with me. Here you go, Bob. Now you can get around faster. I also collected some sand on the way back home. I collected enough iron while I was at the cave to make an iron armor set for myself and even made some iron tools for my friend. Here, take this iron sword. You'll need it if you're going to be helping me. Luckily, I had gotten quite a bit of gold from the cave and with the sand I had gotten, I made some glass. I then infused the glass and the gold to make golden glass for the windows of my base. Ooh, fancy. On days nine through 10, I knew it was time to go looking for my mom. This is the day I need to find her. I got my new friend Bob to come with me and we headed out on our journey. We then came across a village. While I was exploring the village, I went into some homes and took two beds, one for me and one for Bob. They won't be needing this. Then I stopped to ask a villager a couple of questions. Have you seen a golden LA like me recently? I lost my mom and I'm trying to find her. Uh, huh. You have? Where did she go? It wasn't often you saw a golden LA like me. So thanks to this villager, I was one step closer to finding her. Just then, as he was about to tell me where she went, he got shot in the head with an arrow. No! If only he was alive for five more seconds, I could have known where my mom went. But then I saw that the pillagers had done this. Oh, not you guys again. The pillagers came attacking the village and setting it on fire. So I got Bob to help me and we started to find Fight against them. You take down the ones over there. I got these guys. Let's go. We battled against the pillagers and luckily I was able to fight some of them, but eventually it was time to fly away. There's too many of them, Bob. We must leave now. After all of that running, we finally arrived home and I nestled in my little bed and fell asleep. On day 11, I had a horrible dream about the evil pillager king. Whoa, where am I? Hello there, little golden LA. You must enjoy your freedom while you can. What do you mean? Well, your days are almost over. What? Where's my mom? Did you take her? Perhaps I did. Perhaps not. You find out. He then told me that they were forming a pillager army to capture all the LA. There's something you have that I need, and I will soon receive it. All of it. Give me back my mom. Now I knew why my mom and I were captured since my first day alive. He wanted to use our gold to take over the world. And I wasn't going to let that happen. I'm going to stop you and take back my mom. <laughs> 
I don't know about that. My plan is already in the works. Just watch. I woke up and knew what I had to do. But first, I needed to share my dream with Bob. On days 12 through 15, I started telling Bob about my dream. I need to tell you about the craziest dream I had. There was an evil pillager king, and he told me that he would take down all the LA's to collect our gold. We must stop him. Exactly! There's a lot you must do, but first, only 17% of our viewers are subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe and click that notification button so you never miss a video. Thanks. I'll start making a plan. I then went mining for some redstone to start planning another project for my home. Before we prepare to go find the king, I saw that Bob was still looking really sad, despite his motivation to help me. He needed to be in his element, so I decided to make Bob a music room. I grabbed some wood and started building a little hut near the base, making a little music room for Bob. I also went mining for some redstone and made some music boxes, which I filled up the hut with and he absolutely loved it. I then went to chop down some trees and collected a bunch of apples. Ooh, yummy, lots of apples. I then went back home and made a tree garden and used the apples to make golden apples. Ooh, shiny. I was curious to know what they would taste like now that they were golden. So I took a bite and it gave me some awesome effects. Whoa, look at those two extra hearts. On day 16 through 19, I found some sheep being attacked by some wolves. Oh no, poor little sheep, I'm coming to save you. I brought out my sword and fought against the wolves, saving the sheep. You're coming home with me. After saving the sheep and bringing them home, I needed to build a place for them to stay, so I built a pen. This will be your new home. Go on, little sheep. I wanted to pick some lovely blue orchids, so I went searching for some in the fields. I need some of these flowers so I can dye my sheep. I then found a big field full of blue orchids, so I picked a bunch of them and brought them home with me. Hello, my sheep. Ready to turn blue? I started dyeing the sheep blue and was about to get enough blue wool to start on a statue. This will make a lovely masterpiece. Let's get to work. I then started shearing the sheep and was prepared to start building. I need to make sure I have plenty in order to build this. After shearing the sheep, I went home and noticed that my bed was not quite the color I wanted. So I went searching for some more flowers so I could build a yellow bed. Hey Bob, check out my new bed. Bob and I loved our beds. So we hopped in and got ready for a night's rest. On days 20 through 23, I woke up from my slumber and heard my mom begging for help. Huh? Mom! I rushed out of bed and went outside to see the pillager king holding my mom hostage. Hey, let her go! Son, I'm all right. Please go. Save yourself. It's gonna take a lot more than that, buddy. He then told me he was getting revenge on me for breaking free and killing his men. This isn't right. I was defending my family. Let go of my mother. Not quite yet. You're going to pay for this. Just then, he turned my mom into a golden vex and disappeared with laughter. <laughs> mom! How dare you, pillager king? I'm going to find you and kill you. I was so upset knowing what he had just done to my mother and she was not doing okay. Mom, I can't believe he did this to you. Come here, you little lay. <laughs> My mother had turned vicious and wanted to fight me, so I had no choice but to defend myself now that she wasn't my mother anymore. I don't want to do this. Mom, please come back. I tried to avoid hitting her, but she didn't hold back on me and quickly charged at me with fury in her eyes. I then realized I had to kill her. She left me with no choice. I'm sorry for this, Mom. I slashed my mother with my sword and saw her body fall down as she took her last breath. I was completely devastated. You're going to pay for this, pillager king. On days 24 through 28, I was so angry about my mother's loss, so I thought the perfect way to stay distracted was to work on a statue. This statue will represent us both, Mom. I'll make sure of it. I started working on the statue by using several of the blue wool blocks and made a lot of progress. I then went inside the base looking for Bob to show him the statue, but I could not find him. Bob, where are you? I need to show you something I've worked really hard on. I looked everywhere for him, so I then went back outside and found a note saying, we took your 
your little music player, loser. PK, what? This can't be. Now they took my best friend too? I kept looking at the note to see if there were any helpful details that could give me any clues. Who is PK? Oh no, it must be the Pillager King. He took Bob. I then realized I was so distracted fighting my mom that the Pillager King also took Bob. That sneaky villain. Oh, he's gonna get it so bad. Just watch to the end to find out. I couldn't let him get away with this. He had now taken the two most important people in my life. I must find him before he kills Bob or turns him into something crazy. On days 29 through 33, I was flying through the lands, searching for answers, when I came across a little gingerbread cookie. Oh, hey, little man. Are you lost? Yeah, I think so. He seemed very confused and disoriented, so I tried helping him out. Okay, so what's your name? Well, I'm Gingy, the gingerbread man. Yeah, I can see that. You need to be careful out here. Someone might want to eat you. Gingy then told me about his life story and how he ended up here. I know I look tasty. I was made in the best bakery in town, but I got so frustrated when the baker kept adding more decorations on me. So one day I just hopped off the table and left. I can see why. Did you ever want to go back? Yeah, I tried going back to the bakery because I just want to be enjoyed with a nice cup of coffee. I'll take that over being eaten by a weird creature any day. Gingy wasn't meant to be out in the wild, so I offered to help him find his bakery. Tell you what, I'll help you get back home so you can get back with your gingerbread friends. Does that sound good? Oh yes, please. Just one thing, I think I'm being followed. Suddenly, a wolf woman showed up and wanted to eat Gingy. Finally, Don't worry, I'll protect you, Gingy. The wolf woman put up a strong fight, but she was no match for me. I slashed her with my sword and killed them. Nobody is ever taking one of my friends again. Gingy, you all right, buddy? Yeah, I just want to go home. Okay, follow me. I took Gingy with me and we ran away before any other monsters showed up. On days 34 to 37, Gingy and I finally found the bakery after a long time searching. And it turned out to be the cutest gingerbread house ever. Wow, this is where you're from? We entered the home and it smelled like warm butter and sweet bread. I then turned around and saw Steve as the baker. Oh, hello. I'm here to return your lovely creation. Oh yeah, I'm back. Sorry I left. I wanted to go exploring and then I got lost. No worries, my little man. Thank you, kind sir. Here, take this potato launcher as a reward for returning him back to me. The potato launcher was epic and I couldn't wait to use it. Do you happen to have any potatoes for ammo? I ran out when I was playing with the launcher. It sure is fun though. You should go looking for some. Will do. Thanks. Bye, Gingy. Enjoy the sweet life. I then left the gingerbread house and found a nearby village. I was in luck because I found a patch full of potatoes. So I took some with me and then went to test out my new launcher. Oh yeah, let's try this out. I loaded the launcher and tested it out on some husks nearby and it worked perfectly. <laughs> this is awesome. On days 38 through 40, I continued searching for Bob and now I had this handy tool to help me defend myself against predators. Bob could be anywhere. Maybe I can ask around to see if anybody has spotted him. I then ran into a bun fungus, so I asked him if he had seen Bob. Hey there, have you seen a little music guy around here? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. What's that supposed to mean? I was running out of time and I needed to get some answers. Look, it's very important. I need to find my friend before he gets killed. Have you seen him or not? My information is more valuable than your time. I'm not going to help you like this. The bun fungus seemed like he wanted me to do something in return for his answers. So I offered to help. Fine, if you help me, I'll help you. What is it you want? Well, there's one thing I really need. He then told me that he wanted some mushrooms, but couldn't get his hands on any. Mushrooms, eh? I can help you. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hey, good luck finding any. If you do, I'll help you find your little friend. It's a deal. I agreed to help him find some mushrooms, if it meant he could help me save Bob. So I set out to go find a mushroom island. On days 41 to 43, I kept traveling in search of the perfect place and finally found a little mushroom island.
island. Oh, nice. This will do. I found plenty of mushrooms, so I started collecting as many as I could get my hands on. Suddenly, a mushroom approached me and asked me what I was doing. Well, isn't it obvious? I'm just a hungry LA. Don't mind me. The mushroom got so angry, and then he looked like he wanted to fight. Calling back up. Just then, bone guards started charging at me, and we began to battle. So I used my potato launcher to make some distance and my sword to attack when they got close to me. Get back, you bony freaks. But in the end, they were no match. I then grabbed as many mushrooms as I could and made my way back to the bun fungus. And then I noticed a bunch of skeletons come my way. Oh no, this is the worst timing. Thanks to my armor and weapons, I was ready to fight anyone. So I fought against the skeletons and killed them all. One might as well take some of these bones and put them to good use. Now it was time to get some answers from the bun fungus. On days 44 through 49, I finally arrived back at the bun fungus's base, only to find him disappointed in me. You took forever. Whatever, I brought you the mushrooms. I then started planting some of the mushrooms and used some of the bone meal to grow them. But some of the mungus walking around started shooting lasers at them and made them grow 10 times their size. Cool. But anyway, you have what you requested. I then asked the bun fungus again where Bob was. He seemed to be ready to give me some answers now that he had his mushrooms. Well, thank you for this. I'll help you now. The last thing I recall was seeing some pillagers sell him to the arch -itager. They sold him? That's right. He lived just north of here. Go, now. All right, I must get going. Thank you. After thanking the bun fungus, I rushed out of there and headed north. I better find the arch illager. How dare they sell my friend? I got to the Badlands and found the arch illager's base and spotted Bob inside a golden cage. Bob, hold still. I then snuck around and broke him out of his cage, alerting the arch illager. Quick, we have to leave now. Just then, they summoned some ender ghasts that shot purple cannons at me, much like the ender dragon. Ah, this isn't good. I made sure Bob was safe behind me and I fought against the ender ghast. Once I won the fight, I looked to see the helpless arc illager terrified out of his mind. So of course, I killed him and then found something he left behind. Huh, what's this? The illager had dropped a chest, so I looked through it and found a saddle and golden horse armor. Golden armor? Armor. Woohoo! This is great. Hey, Bob, how are you? I'm glad you're safe now, Bob. I don't want you getting taken away from me ever again. Let's go home. For the days of 50 through 53, I worked more on my statue, making two more blue LAs. Bob even helped out a bit. Same, Bob, same. I then went searching for diamonds deep beneath the land. Wow, look at all this diamond. I gathered enough diamonds to make myself some tools, such as an ax and a pickaxe. I even had enough to make a chest plate and a pair of boots. I'm ready for anything now. I spoke too soon because I was ambushed by a few illager gold miners. So you're the ones harvesting all the gold down here. Well, bring it on. I fought the illagers and went toe to toe with them. Luckily, my new armor protected me while in battle. Die, you crusty big heads. Eventually, I killed all the illagers and they dropped a bunch of raw gold. I'll figure out what to do with all this gold later. I left the cave and outside I found a horse. Well, I guess it's mine now. I tamed the horse and used the gold armor I found from the arch illager and rode off into the distance. On days 54 through 58, I went home so that I could show Bob my new mount. Bob, check this out. Bob really loved my new mount, so I decided to give it to him, since I could already fly anyways. Well, it's yours. Here, take it. Of course, you've been a great teammate, Bob. <laughs> After gifting Bob his new mount, I went mining for some stone and gold so that I could upgrade my base. It's time to make a golden roof. Suddenly, a beetle tamer appeared and had his little beetles attack me. You ugly creatures, get away. I then realized he must have been sent by the pillager king. I know who you're working for, take that. We continued our fight and he kept summoning beetles to attack me. Ah, there's so many of these creepy crawlers. Luckily, I was able to fly to avoid most of them and focus on killing the beetle tamer. I'm gonna need backup, Bob, get ready to fight. Bob came to save the day and started helping me take down the little beetles while I 
used my sword to kill the tamer. Oh yeah, we did it, Bob! Bob and I made a great team. As soon as we continued getting back to business, the pillager king himself showed up, and he was extremely angry. How dare you kill my tamer? Let's spice things up then, shall we? <laughs> what? No! The pillager king summoned a bunch of creepy looking monsters to attack me. They latched onto my face and gave me the ender flu. Get off of me, you freakazoids! Eventually, I destroyed the viruses and remained victorious. But the pillager king got away. On days 59 through 62, I went exploring the lands and came across a giant golden pyramid. Look at all this gold. I went inside of the pyramid and saw a bunch of golden golems. So I went up to the biggest one to have a chat. Hi there, Mr. Golden Golem. Nice to meet you, Jeff. You seem familiar. Um, okay, what would you like? That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I'll be right back. I then left the pyramid to go mining for some diamonds. After all, I needed all the gold I could get. Hopefully there's enough diamonds in here. As I was mining for some diamonds, I started getting bombarded by some wither spiders. Oh, these are scary. These spiders were crazy. They had two heads and a heart on their bodies. Ugh, take that, you freaks. They also gave me the wither effect. Luckily, my regeneration came in clutch and the wither effect had nothing on me. Time to die, you two-headed, eight-legged freaks. I picked up all the string the spiders dropped. Might come in handy later. I found plenty of diamonds so I could do some trading. Cool, now I can go get my gold. I then went back to the pyramid to trade with the golem and received so many blocks of gold that I could use to upgrade my base. All right, time to add some more gold to this beauty. I used the gold and made golden floors for the base. And after all that building, I felt pretty happy about my golden home. On the days of 63 to 66, I began working on the final piece of the statues, the Golden Alley. I knew I wanted it to be much bigger than the other Alley statues and made entirely out of golden blocks. This is awesome. It's coming along so nicely. I then took a break to do some exploring and after a bit of flying, I found a tundra. It's freezing out here. As I was searching, I saw an empty house in the middle of nowhere. It's really lonely out here. I wonder what's inside. I entered the home and immediately saw an illager, so I started to attack them, but they begged me to stop. No, please, don't hurt me. This wasn't normal behavior for an illager, so I put my sword away to talk. What are you doing out here, and why aren't you trying to fight back? The illager seemed extremely scared, and then they told me they had run away from the illager army. I just want peace, that's all. But since then, they've been trying to find me, which is why I'm hiding here. I see. Well, I'm on a mission to kill the king. He took my mother away from me and he also took my best friend. Luckily, I got him back, but I'm ready to seek revenge for what he's done. The illager seemed like he wanted to help me. He then gave me a compass that would aid me in my journey. Don't tell anyone I gave this to you. It might be impossible to kill him, but with these diamonds, you'll have a better chance. Just keep going east and you'll find the pillager camp with a portal. Whoa, thank you. I appreciate your helping me. I guess I better start heading that way. Goodbye. Thanks to the illager, I was now right on track. I better go well armored up. Looks good. On day 67 through 70, I looked around and finally found the pillager camp with another portal. Ooh, I'm gonna have to be extra sneaky here. I then went to hide on top of the pillager outpost since I saw nobody there. Hmm, I wonder about that portal. I kind of wanna go inside. Suddenly, as I was looking around, I saw the pillager king come out of the portal. Nice, perfect timing. <laughs> I made sure to hide while he walked past me and then looked around to see if the coast was clear. I knew I needed to prepare before I entered the portal. After all, it could be a world full of danger in there. I then went back home to gather some supplies so that I could prepare for my next trip back to the portal. All right, let's see what we have here. I then made a few golden apples and ingots that I could take with me. These yummy apples will do. I need to have all the energy to take down that beast. I then said goodbye to Bob as I was preparing to go into the nether. Bob, if you don't hear back from me, the base is yours to keep. See you soon. I then gathered my supplies and headed off to my new adventure. From day 70, 
71 through 74, I had made it to the nether portal once more. Hmm. Either this is an ambush attack or no one is here. There was only one way to find out. I booked it towards the portal and flew in. I made it. Whoa, this place is scary looking. Upon arriving, I was attacked by some fiery looking blaze. You don't want any of this. I'm warning you guys. The blaze shot fireballs at my face. I brought out my potato launcher and went on full potato mode. Take this. Yeah. I was able to kill all the blaze and I even collected some of the blaze rods. Now back to looking for answers. Not soon after, I ran into a lone piglin who was enamored when he saw me. Hey, I'm kind lost. Can you help me? Oh my gosh, is that a pure golden delay? That's right. I like your armor. Oh, thank you kindly. Well, I gladly help you, but you have to meet my king. Oh, really? You think he could help me find my way? Oh, shoot, yeah. He could assist you better than I ever could. Oh, okay, then. I'll follow you. I tagged along with the piglin back to his king's base. On day 75 through 78, I was finally led to the Bastion Remnant. As I walked through the Remnant, I had all the heads turning to face me. I must really stand out around here. Of course, you're made of gold. Since they were completely enamored with me, I gave them gold ingots, and they were so grateful to have me in their base. They even gave me gifts back, such as crying obsidian and string. We then made it to the Piglin King, and I noticed he was actually a Piglin Vex who could fly just like me. Huh, not what I expected. Hello, your majesty. Well, I can't believe my eyes. You're a golden boy. Quite the gift you brought me, little piggin. That is true. I carry a lot of value. Anyways, I want to ask you a few questions now that I'm here. Not so fast. First, I need you to take these netherite scraps. Uh, okay. Why would I need this? It's the price I'll pay. I was so confused as to why he gave me these scraps, but I needed to get my answers. Hey, for what? Pay for you. The Piglin King then commanded all his soldiers to attack me. So I went full battle mode and got ready for a fight. Attack, you piglins, attack. The piglins charged at me with their weapons. I slashed some of them while more of them kept appearing from every corner. I was so powerful and defeated all the piglins. You're next. You put up a good fight, little boy. Your death awaits. I don't think so. Take that. I finally overpowered him, and he dropped his sharpened boomerang. Ha! You thought you had a chance. But wait, now he can't really help me. Ah, back to square one. On day 79 through 84, I flew out the nether portal. However, this whole time it was an ambush. Pillagers began attacking me as soon as I stepped out. You guys thought you could capture me this easily? Think again. I fought the pillagers with everything I had, the potato cannon and my diamond sword. This is way too easy. Eventually, I slayed all the pillagers. After it was all done, I went on home. Bob, I'm home. You did? What is it? Bob had made me a smithing table. I knew what I could use this for. Thanks, Bob. This is gonna make me stronger. Using the netherite scraps and some gold ingots, I was able to make netherite bars. Now with this, I can upgrade my diamond into netherite. I used the smithing table Bob made me to do just that. With these upgrades, the pillager king won't stand a chance. Later at night, I went looking for some endermen. Oh, there they are. The endermen were tough foes. They kept screaming at me. However, they didn't have a very good reach, so I was able to overpower them, eventually killing them all. And some of them dropped pearls. Exactly what I needed. Ender pearls. I turned the blaze rods I had gotten from earlier into blaze powder and combined it with the ender pearls to make eyes of ender. Let's see where this takes me. On days 85 through 89, I came across the stronghold. So I started digging down into the ocean and it was very difficult to hold my breath. Okay, let's cover the water up and keep digging. After tunneling down for a long time, I finally reached the stronghold. Oh, what do we have here? I got to the library and saw that there were so many bookshelves. So I started collecting some so that I could bring them back home with me. Ooh, Bob will like this. As I was collecting them, some spider creepers started bombarding me. I fought against the spiders and was able to kill each and every one of them. A lot of them just exploded. I guess they act like spiders and creepers. Makes 
makes sense. After I killed all the spider creepers, I thought I had enough books and string. So I ran away before anyone else showed up. As I left the stronghold and the ocean, I ran into Steve, who appeared to be exhausted from all the running. Steve, you okay? Ah, uh, yeah, I, I just need to breathe. Are you running away from someone? What's going on? I need your help. I couldn't take any more distractions. I needed to stay focused if I was going to defeat the king. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm really busy. I have to go. No, wait. Hopefully Steve was okay, but right now I was on a special mission, so I continued flying away. From days 90 through 93, I returned home to finish my statue. I'm so excited to finish this. This is gonna look awesome when it's done. Bob and I worked together to make the process much faster, so we finished it in no time. I was definitely right about the turnout, because when we finished building, it looked amazing. This is a huge golden alley made of pure gold, and people are gonna be able to see it from miles away. Now it was time to get back to business. I thought to myself, if I really wanted to take down the Pillager King, I would need the best of the best. So I decided to make an enchantment table. I need some materials first. I went looking for some lapis in order to level up my gear. And luckily I found plenty inside of the cave. Here's a bunch. I can't wait for this. I started mining and collected as much lapis as I could. And I was now ready for a cool upgrade. The next step was to enchant all my armor and weapons. That way I could be the most powerful opponent anyone could ever fight against. I mostly got protection and unbreaking. However, I did get fire protection and projectile protection on some of my armor and sharpness on my sword. I feel invincible now. I then decided to test out my new equipment on some llama spiders, since we could really use less of those creatures. Take this and that. Too easy. The llama spiders stood no chance. With that, I flew back home. On days 94 through 96, I woke up to some loud footsteps. Who's there? I rushed out of my bed to see who was lurking outside of my home, only to find out it was Steve. Hi, sorry to scare you like that. Uh, I, I've made a big mistake, you see. Big? What do you mean, Steve? Uh, well, it's, uh, hard to explain. Suddenly, a giant angry gingerbread cookie started walking towards us. Steve, what the heck? This is why I need your help. We need to kill my creation. It's gotten too powerful. Ugh, what have you done? <laughs> Whatever, I'll help you. But we're gonna need a lot more than a sword to kill this one. I have a gun. Attack! As soon as the battle began, Steve ran away for cover. It was me versus the giant Gingy. Gingy was so extremely powerful, using blue bombs and engraved thunder to destroy anything in his way. He's tough, but he is also slow. We can do this. Eventually, I killed Gingy and looked over at Steve, who was now in tears. Aw, oh, man, I really liked him. But you know what? I'll just make a new one. Here, take some gunpowder for your troubles. I don't know what I'll do with this, but anyways, good luck, Steve. Sorry about your cookie. Steve thanked me for my help and then left me wondering how he created such a monster. Ugh, that was weird. Anyway, time to move on. From days 97 through 98, I returned back to scout out the pillager's nether portal. Mm, let's see what we have here. As I looked around, I noticed it was being guarded by several pillagers. Whoa, there's tons of them now. The pillager king must be in there. There doesn't look to be any way for me to get in now. Just then, I had a brain blast, but I needed Bob's help for it to work. Back home I go. I got home and let Bob know about my big plan. So look, Bob, I'm going to fly into the nether portal as fast as I can. And you you will throw a bomb at the portal once I'm in. What? Why not? Bob was scared that he was going to lose me, but I knew my plan was the only way I was going to defeat the king, so I needed his help. Bob, I promise I'll find a way back. Trust me on this. Thankfully, Bob agreed to help me, despite how worried he was. Oh yeah, I won't let you down, Bob. I then went to sort through my resources to find some helpful items to aid me in this battle. I then used the gunpowder that Steve gave me to make TNT, and then used the TNT to craft a few bombs. Now we're ready. Bob and I set off towards the portal one final time. On days 99, I finally made it back to the portal, but this time I was prepared. All right, Bob, this is it. Yeah, I'm gonna go in there, kill the king, and then go home to celebrate with some cookies, all right? 
Yeah, I need you to do something. You gotta subscribe, like the video, and hit the bell notification so you never miss another video. Thanks, Bob. Oh man, I'm kind of nervous, but I know this will work. I then saw Bob get really sad, as if he was never going to see me again. I'll miss you too, but don't worry, I'll be back in no time. I reassured Bob that I wasn't going to die. After all, we only had each other in this world. We then started counting down before I flew into the portal to finish my epic mission. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! My plan was working. As I flew in, Bob shut it down with a bomb, and I finally headed towards the Pillager King's base. On day 100, I confronted the Pillager King. Hello, your highness. You come at the perfect time. I was just about to send some of my army to go capture you. Why are you doing this? Capturing all the LAs? Your LAs are just what I need to carry my items. Especially golden ones like you. You'll pay for what you did to my mother. <laughs> well, you better try your best. The Pillager King then started attacking me with his evoker fan. So I brought out my weapons and went for it. I used my potato launcher, boomerang, and netherite sword to fight back. You're going down, loser king. It's Pillager King, not Loser King. The Pillager King was tough, but luckily I had my golden apples to give me the advantage. Oh man, these taste delicious. Eventually, I used my boomerang to get one last clean shot at the Pillager King and killed him. Ah! 